many times you wake up and say, I want to do this and I want to do that. And I want a new car and I want a new house. And that's a lust, you know? I want, I want to prophesy and I want to, be, I want to be successful. It's the lust. Everything in the world comes from this lust of I want, I want, I want. And then he goes to say, you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss. Okay, that's what we don't want, want right? We want to ask and not amiss. Yeah. We want, when we ask God, God says, before you ask, I hear you. Before you ask. But you ask and you ask amiss. So when you pray and when you don't receive something, guys, it's because it's a miss. Oh, I ask, maybe I don't receive because I spend it on my own pleasure. That means the desire itself was not something that is consecrated and sanctified. It's Wow Tuesday, and we are so happy that we are back. <laughs> Come on, give it up for our bandies. Um, wow, we missed you guys. Oh, only this side. <laughs> okay, yeah, we missed you all. We really missed you guys. Um, but we come... Uh, uh, Filled. We come filled and we come overflowing um, because, I, I don't know, I just feel like we've we brought back the love, the prayers, the support, the commitment, the ownership of our global, of our US and Canada and even global wildlife families, okay? And we've just intertwined, I feel like they've intertwined and, and knitted themselves even more uh, closely with all of you and us, Yeah. And you'll hear more about that in Kay's uh, message uh, today. But it's been a tremendous time. And um, I love Ka's uh, testimony because it's prophetic. It's so prophetic how she traces, she traced and she honored every single person, every single incident, every single spiritual experience, every single you know, person who's sown into her life to bring about this. And then she has this desire. What is the desire? And for Ka, it's a big deal, okay? I know Ka. Okay, I've known Ka for a long time. We're, we're family. Okay, it's a big deal because she's, for her to say, I want to outgive. I want to outgive. I want to I give. I wanna, what is she doing? She's attaching herself beyond her needs, beyond her present situation, beyond the, 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 the challenges that she faces on a day to day. Okay, beyond all of that, she's now plugged herself in and said, okay. I'm giving this, I'm doing this, I'm committing to this, I own this thing. And she's challenging the principalities and the powers. So you, you can't mess with this, I'm attaching myself. I'm moving with this vision that God has given these people, this community that is growing, that is flourishing, and I'm saying, bless me so that I can be the blessing. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. It's not, your, it's not about your depleting bank balance. Yes. It's about your overflowing one. Yes. Right. It's about your overflowing one. It's not about your waning talents. <laughs> it's about discovering new ones. Hmm? It's not about getting old and winding down. It's about eternal and immortal, abundant life. It's about abundant life here and now. The quality of that, the exponential moment of that right here, right now. It's about purpose. It's not about some blase, you know, feel good, inspirational, whatever that's dangling in the clouds. It's about the earthly things that we try to tell you about and that you now comprehend, I believe. And it's about the spiritual things that merge with it, that have now unified in one, in Christ. The up, the down, the in, the out. We now live on a different dimension. And it's about that fruit, that miraculous blessing, fruit, manifestation of his glory coming through in your lives. And it doesn't happen by sitting alone remotely somewhere and just believing. It happens by attaching yourself to the body by calling yourself by his name, 
by choosing the name of your body and your church, your community, your people, by identifying with the challenges, the best of us, the worst of us, and saying, yes, that's my family. <laughs> that's my family and I love them. Okay, and we believe that we're making change, tremendous change, building momentum, tremendous momentum. And you will all feel the impact of that yes, yes, yes. in the days, in the months, in the years, in the decades to come as we journey together. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, uh, Jumping, okay, so I want to show you a video. Okay, let's show you the video first, because I'm jumping topic. My car loan of $14,992 just got paid off, and I have a current balance of zero. Yeah. It's paid off! Yes! <laughs> yes! Uh, yeah, $26,000. You see it? You see it right there. Now, I want to just activate the angelic right now. Can I do that? There's no point. You can work your butt off and make it, trust me. Or you can have a bit of favor, okay? And favor comes when angels meet you in those junctions of synchronicity. So the first, first, the first thing we do, we need a little energy. So we're gonna just get the energy up because you might, yeah, 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 I like the noise. I, I, I like the yeah. That's good, that's good. Certain angels that are in charge of banking, okay? They are in charge of your loans coming in. They're in charge of your banking. They're charging of your credit scores. They're in charge of paying your debts off. So once it's activated, if one, two, three, four people, five people get something, it means you are the body. Discern the body. It's for you. I declare right now that your credit scores will go up. That means that your value will start coming up. Value for your life will start coming up and it'll be seen in your credit scores. It is the sign of the accreditation of righteousness. The accreditation. Did I speak about accrediting righteousness? So for that, the sign of that will be credit scores going up. You look at your credit scores in the morning, you look at it now, <laughs> I've been accredited for credit. My credit has been raised. It's gonna happen now. Okay, come on, what is it? Credit score up 36 points today. Credit score up 42 points. The bank's released $7,000 today that I've been waiting for for a month and my credit score went up nine points. Up two points. Your credit score goes up two points, yes. My balance was in Sri Lankan rupees or yeah. something like uh, 900,000 yeah, something yeah. on my savings. Yeah. All of a sudden, I, it had like 1.1 million rupees. Wow. And then I checked my app yeah. where I had some refunds or something. Yeah. Nothing on that. app. Well, I got a clear to close on a transaction that had some massive issues. The, the thing comes in at 9.23, the time is 9.25. While we're talking. I got a credit from Costco. Right now? Yeah. How much was that for? $233. $233. I declare a prophecy, a reversal of charges on your life. Re a reversal. The people will show you favor right now in Jesus' mighty name. Uber fare. Yeah, they just sent it back. Yeah. I got my Uber reverse. I heard it when I started coming in because God is healing Peter's right hand. So I don't know who's Peter in the house and who's Pete, but is there a Pete with a problem in the right hand? Peter's right hand, yeah. Yeah, Peter's right hand. Just stand up, yeah. The right hand of Peter, which is Anne. Remember, we have um, big dogs, and I had a 100-pound dog run into my knee and hyperextended. It looked like a flamingo leg and fractured my tibial plateau. So I'm four and a half months out, and so that is what we are. Healing. Morning now, so I haven't been able to sit in, um, bend my legs more than in a sitting position, 90 degrees. So now, with his holding of me, I can do a full squat. Wow. I've had a wrist kind of a pain every time I do this. I feel it from work, yes. years and years. Yes. It's yeah, gone. Demo day, demo I just want to show you the right hands that are getting healed. Okay, what about, happened? About five years ago, I fell and yeah. I had a ganglion cyst. So they took away the cyst, but ever since then, yeah. it's been hurting. But yeah. it's like not hurting. Yeah. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> I've always had a hard time with my right thumb, but it's yeah. hard to even grip a pencil. Or yeah. This does not hurt at wow. all. Wow! Because you said ganglion Crazy. cyst and plagued by the ganglion cyst, it's completely gone. <laughs> you mean the whole bump is gone? Yeah. Yep. Wow! I was wearing my glasses this morning and I too can read the screen and I couldn't read it. But I you had read? like mouse thumb from yeah. using the mouse too much and it went away last night and it's yeah. still gone. My knee's not tight anymore. I had x-rays done they said that you have like 80 year old knees. Yeah. And I don't have that anymore. Oh. Oh. Trigger finger yes. was healed before. Yes. Okay, I fell on this. It happened on this hand. Now it's healed. I, I always wear my glasses 
all the time. Yes. And I was re- I need them to read the Bible. And when you said take them off and run and do whatever, touch your eyes. Yeah. I was reading the Bible yeah. without them. And yeah. I just been walking around now without them at all. Wow. <laughs> so I tore a ligament in my ten- my tendon. So I've been working for months now to get my uh, range of motion back, yeah. and I've gotten my range of motion. Wow. The amount of pain that I deal with with both knees. It, it takes my breath away to wake up. And it's, I just ran. <laughs> I haven't run in years. My yeah. migraine went away. I've had this pain for a while because a lot of scar tissue. Yes, yes. And no pain. Pain in my shoulder is gone. I'm, I thought I had carpal tunnel syndrome, but I'm just running around. Wow. I can see. Oh, yeah. I couldn't see that far. You couldn't see that far? Yeah. So you got a healing of your hands, a carpal yes. tunnel, and your sight. And my sight. That's a, on Resurrection Sunday. Discern the body, discern the body. If any of you have any of those issues that you heard of, draw on it, take it, because it is for you. It is for you. Well, it was, we were just saying this time the financial flow, the whole time in the US, there was such an ease. It was such an ease, and it was also on another level. I mean, Manju uh, was one of the speakers, Manju Hattotua, Philip Viraratn, I don't know if anybody watched it, but it was their best ever. Their best ever, like, we, they really seeded into everyone and everyone was blessed and we have come back uh, with more blessings attached to them and more plans for the future, near future, okay? So Kay will update you on all of that. But also, wonderfully, we had a stopover in Dubai, okay? We went to the desert where we normally go, um, usually for a refreshing, because that's where Pasty is. But this time, it was a refreshing, but it was with our family, uh, Life Church and also NCC Church, okay? Where, I don't know if you caught it on social media, but John and Kelsey uh, are really pioneering something wonderful there, taking over from Pasty, where Pasty and Adi Sabi left off, okay? And uh, they are now bishops. He is the bishop of the Apostle Diocese of Dubai and we now together form this huge family okay all one family spread uh, across Dubai India Sri Lanka and uh, the USA okay that's how we're going in August so you are growing you are flourishing uh, your body is receiving new talents new giftings new uh, uh, income new output new everything okay uh, and so i just want to bring back those good that good news good tidings great news for all of you right so Okay, one more thing. You want want me to show you something? No. Uh, All right, one more thing, guys. Uh, As you know, okay, this is the Aurudu season, Singhala and Tamil New Year. And so we want to actually uh, not have the service on Sunday, right? We want to not have the service on Sunday. Uh, We are going to now meet again straight after this service we'll be having it on the 16th Tuesday April okay so we encourage you all to celebrate uh, uh, you know uh, eat kelm eat kelm eat kiribat celebrate and uh, you know holidays whatever you all want to do and come back on Tuesday 16th April our next service with us okay you all don't have to be so excited about it, but yes, be excited. Okay, um, all right, are you ready? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, then welcome K with the words. You love that me feeling so high, that me feeling so high, that me feeling like I can change the world tonight. You have to get that right. You guys have to get that right. (laughs) But um, just to tell you that we are releasing you on Sunday because this time New Year has fallen on the weekend. And it's so important. We want to honor this nation. And we want to make sure that you celebrate New Year, Sinhalese and Tamil New Year. Okay? If it was on a weekend, on a weekday, that would be different. You got it? But I want you to celebrate. I'd like to take pictures of how you do that, okay? It's so, come on, yes, come on, yes. 
We at the church, we celebrate our culture. We celebrate our culture. You know, there's so many times when you become a Christian, and I realize that many people, they don't celebrate their culture. And suddenly they go and take on some other culture, uh, which, is not, which is not Sri Lankan or Tamil. And suddenly they're celebrating Jewish holidays. <laughs> Have you noticed that some churches are celebrating Jewish holidays and they don't celebrate their own holidays? Something's wrong. <laughs> Something's radically wrong and we want to be different. We want to honor this nation and we want to honor our race. If you're a Tamil, celebrate your culture, man. Be proud of who you are. If you're a Tamil, if you're a Sinhalese, be proud of who you are. You don't come to church and they don't tell you, oh, no, don't worry, we're all not Christians, and so we don't have any race. That's not true. Okay, don't believe in that. Okay, God made you who you are with a race, with a creed, whether you're Indian, whether you're Sinhalese, whether you're Tamil, whether you're whatever it is, whether you're a Muslim, because he loves you exactly the way he made you. Okay, exactly the way he made you. So let's get used to celebrating who God made us. Okay, so I'm going to celebrate Sinhalese New Year the way Sinhalese do it. And I hope you will celebrate Tamil New Year the way Tamils do it. Okay, deal. Yeah, okay, yes. Have you got that going? Yeah, let's go. And that just happened. You saw it there? Nehemiah Horeb says, OMG, I had a lump on my left wrist and I just checked it and it's gone. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right, you can take it off. But I just want you to understand that just happened. You see, but, and that happens to me all the time. And that can happen right now. Okay. And I don't do much in Sri Lanka of that kind of stuff. Um, I wonder why, actually. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll tell you why. Uh, shall I tell you why? Is that okay? Okay. And now there's no, I'm, I'm, I love you guys very, very much. And it's not to fault you. But it's a very strange thing when God, when you have, they say a single link, you know, Maybe Eric, you can do a little thing on that. It says when you see something constantly, you just take it, huh, you take it for granted. Okay? And so I used to do a lot of miracles, signs of wonders here, and then I realized that people like, like they get used to the supernatural and they get familiar with the supernatural and they get hard with the supernatural, and once that happens, they don't have the supernatural in their life. Yeah, okay, if you get hard with the supernatural, like if you stop looking at your phones, if you stop, like if I look, look at it, it's gold dust on your hands, and if you stop looking at it, if you stop getting excited, like, oh, there's gold dust on your hands, then God pulls back that very thing because it's his presence that brings the miracles. I, you can, no man can do that kind of stuff. It can only be an angel that moves with me to do that stuff. Now, I wouldn't want to get that angel to move when people are like, Oh, that's normal. You see? But if there's excitement in the church, then I like to do those things. And it is strange because you guys have been persecuted for miracles. Our life church. You see, you remember the time when before all these guys were getting persecuted? We are the ones getting persecuted for phone charging and phone batteries and money charging. You remember that? Yeah. yeah? And what happened was when that started happening, decent people, yeah, they started getting um they started getting scared that other people might think that you're foolish. Yeah? The fear of ridicule, the fear of man came in. The fear of ridicule, how can you be some, who you are in community and society and then be looking at your phones for chargers and you know, money coming into your accounts? Hmm? And so there's a fear of ridicule. And at that point of time, God calls that fear of ridicule, he calls it the fear of man. The fear of man. So actually, if you're ridiculous, he's like, you know what? I'm just worried to talk about that kind of stuff because maybe, maybe, you know, people will think that I'm fooled. Yeah, maybe I'm fooled. And so what happens is the fear of man is what we call the religious spirit. And at that point of time, when that happens, God can't do the supernatural anymore in your life. Okay? And you've got to be very, very careful of that spirit. It's called the religious spirit. Okay, and I know you've been persecuted and stuff like that for that. And that was a long time ago now. You know, other people are not doing it, getting persecuted for things that we've done, but you know, <laughs> that's the way God rolls, okay? But the fact of the matter is, never ever be ashamed of what God does. Never. Never. 
Imagine if I got scared and I said, oh my God, you know, I remember the time when, when that used to happen and then a lot of people would tell me, no, no, don't do this anymore. No, don't do this online anymore. Don't do this. And after the whole month, two months after that, I remember we do it every week at church. Remember, every week. I'll make sure we do all the miracles and the supernatural just to say we're not scared. You see? And then, of course, I slowed it down because people, I realized, got scared. Okay? And people couldn't walk with me. Okay? But one day when you decide to walk with me again, we'll go on to greater realms of glory. Okay? Different churches lead at different times. At one point, you all were leading, and now at this point, they're leading. Okay? And they're not leading and competing with you. Please understand my life, church. The, the U.S. church and the Western church is leading to support you. Okay? And I can guarantee you that. I can guarantee you that. That all the way. Yes, give them a big hand. I can guarantee you that, that they have come a long way. It's been three years that I've worked with them and they have come a long way and you will see that their support will bless you, this local church. You have blessed them for many years, for 15 years you have blessed them and you have raised them up and you fed them, but you'll realize that they will come along, along, alongside you now and they will feed you and they will bless you. Watch, watch, watch this thing, watch this thing because we have to understand what God is doing. Now, let me tell you a story, okay? Um, remember what are we about? We're about our... Father's business, yeah. okay? So that's the series, and um, we, we are, now we're getting really into this, okay? If you thought you were getting into it before, you were not, okay? Now we're really getting into the Father's business, okay? Now, I'm gonna read something to you in James 4. James 4 is an interesting chapter, okay? And uh, this is what it says, James 4. James 4, I'm never I've, I've never felt this way about the, the about where I, I know I've been to the US many times, uh, many years, you know, and served there. But this time, I feel, like Fiona said, more connected than ever before. Because this time, I just don't have a place I go to preach. I have a family that knows my heart, knows my mind, and wants to support what we vision and what we plan. They know my pain, they know your pain, and they say, hey, you know, what can we do? Okay, that's what we got from the US this time. Okay, and I'm telling you, it's been like never before. And you'll see it come to pass what I'm saying. Now, watch this. I'm going to show you something. Uh, this is in James, James, James 4, right? That's what I said, right? Okay, let's go into James 4. I'll show you something, James 4. Here it is. James 4, my brothers. Okay, Wait, okay. Um, James, is it James 4? Oh, yeah, James 4, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Let's start here. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires or pleasure that war in your members? Okay, listen carefully. You lust and do not have. I like that. You lust, but you do not have. How many times do you wake up? You know, people will wake up in the morning and say, I want to do this and I want to do that. And I want a new car and I want a new house. And that's a lust, you know. I want, I want to prophesy and I want to be, you know, I, I want to be successful. It's the lust. He says, but do you lust, but you don't have. Is it that? Is it there? You murder and covet and cannot obtain and you fight war. So he says, everything in the world comes from this lust of I want, I want, I want. That's what he means. Even wars and murders come from there. He said, there, right? And then he goes to say, you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss. Wow. Okay, that's what we don't want, want right? We want to ask and not amiss. Yeah. We want, when we ask God, God says, before you ask, I hear you. Before you ask. But you ask and you ask amiss. Is it there? It says, come on, just lift your hands up and say, God, I don't want to ask amiss. I don't want to ask amiss. I want to ask so that I can get. Okay? You ask, you, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. So when you pray and when you don't receive something, guys, it's because it's amiss. You got it? That you may spend it on your own pleasures. Wow. Adulter adulterers and adulteresses. Yeah? You, you got it there? Do you not know that the friendship with the world is enmity with God? You got it? Okay? So that's really cool because now we know, oh, I ask, maybe I don't receive because I spend it on my own pleasure. Huh? That means the desire itself was not something that is consecrated and sanctified. Okay? So once you see that in James, then I'm going to tell you another story, and this is going to be an interesting story. And, uh, you know, to do stuff like that, you know, this kind of stuff I've been doing for years, years and years and years, and much more than this. This is just, this is baby stuff, like what you see me do. Okay, now, that kind of stuff actually translates into my real life, not just 
not just there. Okay, those same guys who do that kind of thing do other things. Okay, that translates into my real life. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a few stories. I can tell you uh, very strange stories, but are you ready for a strange story? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right, it's going to be a strange story, okay? And Peter and I didn't want to tell this story for a long time, and I only shared it with mystery school students. Okay, CMS students have certain things that I thought that maybe the world will never hear again, but, but, but CMS got some of these stories. And one of those stories was one day when we were in prayer, now listen carefully, okay? And this is the time if you don't want to come to this church again, you cannot come. No problem, okay? We are not ashamed of what God does. One day we were praying and we were asking God, you know, we were saying, God, we've got to build this church and we've got to do this stuff and we've got to, you know, you know get, get with, you know, what your program and what have you planned for us. And we were praying and while we were praying, this is a long time ago, many years ago, and while we were praying, we were praying in tongues, okay? And uh, praying the mysteries of God and simultaneously at the same time, Okay, so we didn't know what to do with this for a long time till I had a, I had a, I had a, um, I had a thought, but I didn't know what, whether, how to fix it in or how, whether it's going to work out. And so we were praying in tongues, and while we were praying in tongues, Fiona saw something come up to her. Okay, this thing came up to her and it, it was like a worm, glowing worm. Okay, and she looked at this and this thing came up to her like this and like said, can I come in? Okay, and before she knew it, before she said yes or no, she went straight into her. Okay, and <laughs> this is all in the realm of the spirit, huh? Yeah, when you pray, we see, we are not <laughs> like others, right? We are, they, they call, some people call us prophets, okay? <laughs> so this realm is not weird to us. Constantly we see demons, angels, constantly, but we've never seen a worm, okay? <laughs> we, we, yeah, it's like a fat caterpillar. We've never seen a worm before. We've seen demons, all this, but we've never seen these strange, strange things, okay? The same time, identically, I came out, we were both praying in tongues, I saw a box, and when I opened the box, a whole box of glowing worms, and they all came into me. Okay, all right. Okay, then it's a strange story. Right? I don't think it's going to be strange, right? Okay. We finished our prayer, and we both were like, what the heck, what was that? There are weird things that happen to us, trust me. I mean, I have rocks talked to me, all kinds of things, okay? So don't worry about that. One day I'll tell you those stories, all right? <laughs> when I know what, they, what, what the rock was saying, I'll tell you, right? I still don't know, but I'm figuring it out slowly. But, so when this thing happened to us, we were wondering like, what, what was that? Did we get possessed? You know, because that's the natural con context. Like, like, am I okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> what will I manifest? Did something come into me? Was it e evil? Was it wicked? Was it, uh, was it God? Because it has to be, it can't be not God because we were praying in tongues and we were worshiping Jesus. Yeah, okay. Strange story, right? Okay. You can understand when I tell certain stories, after many, many years, I am saying something to you. I'm not just saying, believe me, we don't just move. I'm not just telling you stories. I know a season, I know a time, and I know a season and time that a certain message has to be released in a certain time. Okay? So I'm telling you something now. Okay. So after that, we both were like, what was that? We prayed to the Lord, we didn't have any context. I had a feeling because I'd read something, something long time ago. Fiona had no clue because I never told her about this thing, but I'd read something long time ago about King Solomon, and I'm gonna read it to you, okay? And it's in um, one, Solom uh, one, uh, 1 Kings 6. Please stand there. Okay. You guys have gone very quiet on the meeting. If you were too quiet, I'm used to, yeah, yeah. I've just come from the US and it's very noisy, okay? So I like noise, okay? 1 Kings 6. Hmm? <laughs> 1 Kings one six, one King six, six, one King 6 verse 7, okay? I think, I think, I think, I think. Okay, so here it is. Uh, okay, and the temple when it was being built, was built with stones finished at the quarry so that no hammer or chisel or iron tool was heard in the temple while it was being built. Now that's really a strange story. Solomon built the first temple, but... Like the law, God told Moses that he should not use any chisel to chisel the stone. Do you know that the whole temple of Solomon was not built with a chisel? That's crazy. This is really, I mean, just understand this, this is real stuff. Just understand, like we look at the pyramids, okay? And there's so many aliens and all these stories on pyramids. And like, how did they create all the pyramids like that? Like, what, how did they do it? How did they cut? They're looking at these boulders. The boulder's the size of this room. And they're like, how did they cut the boulder? How did they do it? 
if you look at the first temple, there are some of the first temple uh, stones are there, and these are massive stones, okay? And they were not supposed to use any instrument, axe, chisel, anything, but they were supposed to cut it. How did they do it? Okay, very interesting. And so this is important to understand because I'm telling you this story because what are we doing? We're about our father's business, okay? And so when this, when you see a scripture like this, you, you, you start thinking like, how did Solomon get this thing done? He built one of the greatest, the, the queen of Sheba fell nearly painted when he saw the temple and what it was like. So you can understand that it was like so amazing. When she saw it, it's like, what is this? Because it wasn't built by human beings. That's, and so when you look at the pyramids and you realize the pyramids, like there's something wrong with this and still scientists don't know how they build the pyramids because they had a technology to build that was not the technology that normal people had or normal men had. And that is why Solomon built a temple without any, using any instruments. Okay, now. What are we today? So Jesus looks at the second temple, not the first temple, but he looks at the second temple, and he says, tear this temple down so that now I will raise a new temple. And he says, that is the temple of the body. Am I correct? Yeah? Okay. So you see, so that temple today, those stones were not cut out, or cut out of human hands, but it was cut out of something else. And... I'm going to show it this to you here. If you turn with me to Joshua 1. Is it Joshua 1? No, it can't be Joshua 1. Let me see. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, just a pause. Um, I, I forgot to tell you guys when you said we're pioneering something in the Middle East, the most amazing thing happened. Tanika Obesekara, Pastor Neil and Savi's second daughter, you all know, our buddy, uh, was ordained and she becomes the first single female senior pastor in that region. So that's very, very important, cool stuff to share with you there. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I'm going to find it for you, but it's, yeah, I'm looking for the Jeremiah one, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm going to give you, a, I'm going, I'm giving you a story. Okay. I'm giving you a story because it's so important to understand this. So you see, I'm, I'll just give you a background. And so when you go into the word that was used for the word flint, or you see the word diamond in the Bible, and he says, I'm going to make your, I'm going to make your hearts engraved with diamonds. He says this. You see it there in, in one, of the, one of the scriptures. I'm going to engrave your hearts with diamonds, he says. Okay, I can't remember that scripture. I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you. You see that word there, if you can, you can find it you know, for me. He says, I'm going to engrave your heart with diamond heads. Now, this is really interesting. And we're seeing, we're trying to build a temple, right? We're trying to build the temple of God. So I was thinking about this and with this experience that happened to me and I was asking God, you know, what is going on? Like, what was this thing? And I remember a story that when Solomon had to actually go out and what is it? Jeremiah 17, 1. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Jeremiah 17, 1. This is the word here. Okay. This is the word. Jeremiah 17, 1. Jeremiah 17, 1. Strange day, strange stories. Okay. Is it Jeremiah 17? Is it 1? You know? Yeah. That's right, yeah. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron. You see there? With the point of a diamond, it is engraved. You see that there? That word point of a diamond is an interesting word. On the tablets of their hearts and on the horns of your altars. Is it, you see there? And so right there, that word the, with the point of a diamond. Now, isn't it strange that in those days, like thousands of years ago, they understood that the, that the diamond was the hardest stone ever. At least without doing any sort of carbon testing or anything like that, they understood this. But this word there is really interesting. And the point of a diamond comes from a word called shamir. Okay? And the word samir, if you look at it, it's an ambiguous word in the Hebrew. And it means glowing worm. Okay. Glowing worm. It means glowing worm. 
okay? And there's a story in the Talmud and the Mishnah and other Jewish books about this glowing worm that Solomon, and it's in, it's in the Bible, it's many, many scriptures have the same word, Samir, Samir, every time you see it, okay? You see that the word Samir is ambiguous. And so the, so the English translation became, I'll convert it to diamond or I'll convert it to thorns. Okay, anything that pricks. Hmm. Anything that pricks. So the, so the English translation didn't understand Samir because they had, had no context. You receive with a Jewish guy to understand what is a Samir and someone has to have an experience with a glowing worm to understand, oh, that's, I know what this is. Okay, and so we don't know what the background of this was, but the story was because God clearly told Solomon, do not make the temple with anything that is a sharp object that can cut you or can prick you. Or anything that has gone to war. No instrument that has gone to war. Do you understand that? He says, because I've got something greater and this is it. And he said, it is the Samir. And he says that Solomon who built a temple, just think how Solomon built a temple. We, can, we can't even imagine how Solomon built a temple. Because clearly it is said that you cannot build the greatest temple of the earth with anything that can cut a stone. So how is this man going to think do this? So what he does is he goes in, he asks his people, Solomon was an amazing, amazing guy, you know, and so he had a, amazing capabilities and capacity and he has amazing thaumaturgic pra practice. He, could, he knew exactly what to do and how to do it. And because of that, he got what is known at that time, in that season, we don't know how he got this, but he got these worms. And he made sure that the temple was built by these worms that would actually cut the stone. And that worm was called the Shamir. And it says after the second temple period, when the last prophet died, Malachi dies, the Talmud says, that these glowing worms were never seen again in, the, in Solomon's era. Never. Never, 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 never. Now, this is a very strange story because no one talks about it. No one knows it, but they're wondering how he built a temple. When it's clearly written, you cannot build a temple using any kind of instrument. So you just imagine God gives you instruction and he gives you instruction to do some days, but you cannot use this type of instrument. Hmm? Unless you have some sort of capability <laughs> that is outside of human technology, if you don't have this, the technology, you don't have the instruments, you cannot use it. He said, you cannot use chiseling. You cannot use labor. You cannot use toil. You cannot use war. So the chiseling represents all those things because to chisel something, to break something down, to break something so hard down, you would need to toil, you would need to labor, you would need to do something. You'll have to use a lot of force. Just imagine you were trying to build the pyramids with chisels. Think about that. Just imagine if there are quarries that, that in those days, they build these temples in massive stones, they lift it and they're using human strength. He says, I don't want human strength involved in this. It has to be done with something better. And so Solomon gets this Samir. So whatever this Samir is, comes in and cuts the stones. Now this is all Hebraic Jewish stuff. You can read it. It's not, it's not, uh, it, yeah. You can read all about it, yeah. Okay, and he cuts the temple with these things and makes sure that the temple of Solomon was built. You see, the interesting thing is, it is, Shami re represents something. Shami represents the worries and the cares of man. And that is why in Isaiah, when they translate this word, it is to do with the cares and the worries of man and the thorns that man has. Because when you sow seed, he says it won't give out fruit, but it will give you thorns. Do you understand it? And so when we work and you and I work and we sow and we, uh, we uh, when you say, no, I won't even say sow, but when you work in the field of your companies and your businesses, what you get is a lot of thorns and you get all pricked up. Yeah. Yeah. You see, and you're trying to get fruit, but you can't because it's, 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 you're entangled. Right. And many of us feel that way, you see? And that is why they converted in English, they converted into thorns because it had, a, it had a accent in the language of being pricked. Hmm? but not being pricked, it means it can cut through, okay? It's interesting because it also converts, they also convert this word to something like a diamond that can cut and chisel stone. And interestingly, man's heart was considered in the Old Testament, when it is hardened, it was considered as stone. 
Okay, this is very important. And then you see in the New Testament, the same kind of language being used when Paul is trying to come against the church. And when he's got a ring on his finger so that the church cannot be built. Do you understand that they were trying to build a church? Do you remember the time? And then Paul is now riding his horse on the road to Damascus. And he's got all the power in the world. Please understand this. When Paul was riding all the way to destroy the church, you get, you get me the scripture where, he say, where, where, where this is, where he says you can't prick against God. It's in, it's in Acts. Okay? And you'll realize this, that Paul now has got the signet ring from the best of the best. You might be the best of the best in the business. You might have got the signet ring. I remember a time when I had to do business and I was in government and I was doing business with the government with the exact, I mean, this, I don't know, but it's probably illegal anywhere else or maybe illegal here, but I'm not, it wasn't illegal. But I was doing business with the government and my business was also very similar. <laughs> okay, but I was hired professionally. Okay, so I, it, was, it was good. It was good for business when that happens. Okay, and at that point of time, I remember I got raised up and I was doing well in business, but I remember I lost everything. And when I lost everything, I lost my connections with the government and all that, that's when God said, now you had the signet ring before, you had every power before to do what you can, but now you watch me, I'm gonna raise you up without any signet ring or without any power. Without any, without any human power. Can you, what is that, Acts, what? Can you go to Acts 9, 5, I wanna show you this. I wanna show you this. Now Paul is the New Testament. Solomon built the temple using not anything that was toil and laborful or anything chisel or strong. The church now in the New Testament has been built. Huh? The church now in the New Testament has been built and Paul has got the power to destroy the church. Okay, and if you can go on top there, if you go to into four. I'll go into three. Go into going one. Yeah. Yeah. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked a letter for him to the, from the synagogue of Damas for him to go to Damascus, so that if, that if he found any who were of the way, so Christianity was called away, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now, here's the interesting thing, and you need to understand this, because Saul wasn't persecuting Jesus. But he was persecuting the new living stones of Jesus. Because he was supposed to be the cornerstone. So when Jesus went down into the building, he was the cornerstone. He said, break this building down so that I can raise up now the new church, and that's the people. And so when Paul was coming against the people, Jesus took offense because it was not against the people. Jesus takes offense. And he says, why are you persecuting me? Do you understand that? So the people represented him, the body. You got it there? And he says, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. You see there, the word goads there is the pricks. It is hard for you, you think you're strong enough, but as you're kicking in, it is now pricking you. Okay? Remember the idea in the Old Testament that the Shamir was anything that is harder than a diamond head that can break stones, that can prick, and that can break into stones. And these were these glowing worms. And they had the ability to break down the hardest thing. And he says, don't you understand that you are, you think you're hard, but you know what? You're kicking against something much stronger, much harder, and much sharper than you. Now, I personally believe this, that that word there, when he says it's hard for you to kick against the goads, is the word means it's hard for you to kick against the things that come to prick your conscience. Okay? And so the New Testament church Paul is now convicted, okay? And he's changed and he's a transformed man and he rises up to build the living church of Jesus Christ, you see? And from there, the rest is history, right? 13 books of the Bible and today we have, and, and the church becomes in 300 years the most powerful institution in the world, okay? And, and, uh, and, and when I say before those 300 years, it was not only the most powerful, it was the most effective, impactful and life-changing institution and it still is. 
And that is the business that you and I in. You are in building and becoming living stones, but it's not living stones cut out of hardship, toil, labor, war. There is something else that is building you and making you who you are. Now, let me tell you, yes, yes. If you're going to, um, I, I think it was 1 Peter, let's go to 1 Peter, um, where was it, I think? It was 1 Peter 4, he says, um, you're not living stones coming together, living stones coming together. Um, give, me, give me the scriptures, I'm, I, want to bring it, I want to bring it to that and land this plane. Let me tell you something. I tell you this story because it's very important that you know this story. So I was coming back from the USA and I heard, I had this experience long, long time ago. Okay. And it was so long ago that I put it aside. It was a strange story. Okay. And uh, after that, many strange things started happening to me and I could connect it. I was like, oh, that's a Shamir. And I would tell, you know, that's a Shamir, that's a Shamir. You know, I would tell her that, but I would never have any context for it or what it was about or anything like that. Yeah, so that's why I never shared, because I couldn't put uh, my finger on it. Yeah, there are many things in my life that happens to me that I can't put my finger on it, but it's very supernatural, okay? I wait for the fullness of time for a revelation to grow, and so many, after many years, so where, where was 1 Peter? So 1 Peter 2, 4, 6, because the conversation is continuing. God does certain strange things, and you're wondering, what, what was that, you see? And it, most of the time when God does something, you have no clue, and you have no understanding. It, it, like, like people, People, uh, you're coming together as living stones. Um, is, I think it's in 1 Peter somewhere. Uh, but let me tell you this. Yeah, this is one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The spiritual house, living stones. Yeah, as living stones being built up as a spiritual house. You there? Yeah, so yeah, we'll keep it there. We'll get there. So a lot of times people think, like, like a lot of people want to be prophets and stuff like that. You can see the problems it, it creates, like when people who are not prophets try to be prophets. You see, because... It's a very, very tough job, this job, because it's, it, it's, 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 you're always on, on, the, on, on the, the fringe of madness. And it's the truth, it's, true. it's, all, it's, all, it's Old Testament. You're just like, you're, I don't know, you heard Iron Maiden song, Can I Play With Madness? Okay, it's, it's, it's on the, like, like that, right? So, you see, when you understand this kind of stuff, you, there are things that people say, oh, I just want, I want to meet an angel. Like, I'll just give you a background to this. I want to be an angel. I want to. I, I too want to meet an angel. And I was telling this to Acho recently, just a couple of days ago, because everyone wants me to see an angel. I said, this, "Has anyone in the Bible met an angel and had a good experience?" I mean, has anyone? Have you? If that means people don't read Bible, people don't read Bible, because you tell me, has anyone in the Bible actually met an angel and had a good experience? But people want to meet angels. Because they think there's a fluffy little thing on a cloud with a little bow and arrow, like Cupid. <laughs> I mean, just imagine if I told you, Ajay, I'm just going to give you a story, okay? I told you, Ajay, I'm going to pray. And when I go to pray, suddenly you come and find me, and I can't talk. And I go completely dumb. And then you, you're like, hey, what happened? I said, I was just praying. Who are you praying to? I pray to Jesus. I can't say it. <laughs> and I'm writing, I was praying to Jesus and something happened, I couldn't, can't talk from now on. That really happened. That was John the Baptist's father. <laughs> People want to do my job. And then they think, okay, you know, you can have a good job and you can, you can I want to do, what do you do? You know, all that money transfer, praying for people, all this kind of stuff. You've got to meet an angel. Something can happen. No one has met an angel and had a good experience. If anyone tells you I had met an angel, oh, it was so cute, it was so lovely, and I felt good. It's a lie. It's a deception. It's, a, it's, a, it's, what, it's, it's what I believe is something off, like something, something like, like nothing. When John, in the New Testament, meets an angel, he falls on the ground as dead. That means, just imagine I go to pray, or you go to pray, and then I find you nearly dead. You fall on the ground dead. I do do like CPR on you <laughs> and resuscitate you. And you, I said, what the heck happened to you? I thought you went to pray to Jesus. And you say, well, I was praying and I, I, I nearly died. Would you think it's Jesus? This is all Bible. This is, there's no one in the Bible who has had a good experience. 
if you if you really meet an angel, something strange is going to happen. It's, it's not going to be you're not going to be normal. So don't even ask for it. And some one of my friends recently they asked to meet an angel. Something really it wasn't good. I had to go and pray for them. This stuff is not easy. Jacob goes to pray for an angel uh, to to meet an angel. Just imagine I will go, go I go to pray. And I'm going to pray to them. Say, okay, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. Okay, God, you know, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. And I come out, my whole leg is broken into. And I'm just dragging my leg. I come in. And then all of you all try to pray for me because you know, because my leg is broken. But he said, you don't understand. You, know, my, I don't, you don't need to pray for me. I, I was praying and I broke my leg. <laughs> my leg was broken because I went to pray. I went to serve God, the one I love. But when I came out, my whole leg is broken. You bring me one person who meets an angel and has a good experience in the Bible. So don't look at me like I'm weird. <laughs> it's just that people don't read Bible and they're babes. They don't understand this stuff. So then they want to do great things and they try to do it and then all hell breaks loose. Okay, because to meet that type of power, your character has to be developed. Or you will leave a imprint, for sure. You'd rather come to church and get me to pray over you than get them to pray over you. <laughs> yes, because we have filters. The power, and I'm going to see him and stuff, I won't even go into detail of this. But the fact of the matter is we have filters of power. There are people, certain people who can filter it. Because they've gone through something, the pain, the suffering filters the power so that no one else dies. So important to understand this stuff because I'm getting to this place. Hmm? I'm getting to this place, guys, where God does supernatural things. And we truly have supernatural lives. We're not just saying it. It truly, this is everyday stuff for us, okay? We have supernatural lives and we like to minister through the supernatural to you. And what we are asking the church is just, Come alongside. Yes, one day you will be called to be that person. Maybe it's your job. Maybe you will be called. Maybe you won't be. Maybe you are one, you're one part of the cogwheel. Maybe that's exactly who you are. You know, if you imagine a spring in a machine that decides, like, you know, I don't want to be a spring. I want to be the, the cogwheel or I want to be the whole machine. What are you going to do without the spring? How is it going to work? Or the nut or the bolt? Or the wheel in the car and one wheel says, no, I want to be the engine. And what's happening in Christianity today is the wheel doesn't know it's a wheel. He doesn't know what you want. He doesn't want to own his wheel place. I'm a wheel. I love being a wheel. No, I want to be the engine of the car. Or I want to be the steering wheel. Or I want to be the seat. No, you're a wheel. Without the wheel, I can't make it. And those are the living stones. And people need to understand who they are and why they are at church. When you do that, you will grow. What is that? <laughs> Minori wants me to not. <laughs> You get it. It's all yours. <laughs> I was going to be a wonderful husband. I mean, I, I believe that he's also the nut. <laughs> but but you, you see, you have to understand our position, our place. Own your position and place. Don't try to take any other place. Because there's a distinct, unique place that you have. And if you say, God, raise me up in this, in this place, God will raise you up in that place and he will bless you. And so when I went to the US this time, I was preaching, just simple, this is not complicated. I was saying, guys, if you are all a part of the stones that are brought in, that are uncut with, with pain and with striving and with labor, and it's out of your own goodness and your own or own knowing and is out of your own unction, out of your own conscience that you are built there. And so this church has been built, you must understand, with, by leaders. We don't depend on the offering so much. The offering is very good. Please understand that. There are very generous people here and people give. But I'm not depending on your offering to bless me. I've got my own businesses that bless me. So I'm not depending on you offering to see whether I can buy my next car with that. But there are people like that, I'm sorry. But I'm looking for your offering so that I can build the church and build and do the projects we need to do and do everything I need to do. And therefore I'm unashamed to talk about money because I have the right to talk about money because I'm not doing anything with your money for me. God has blessed me. And we'll talk about it on Sunday. 
next Sunday or Tuesday. On Tuesday, yeah. Okay, my watches. But it has to come out of your own conscience. These stones are built not by the labor of man. You're not sitting here by the labor of man. You're not sitting here by your own unction, by your own will. You're sitting here by the, by the Holy Spirit and your conscience and you're the living stones uncut, not chiseled by human hands, no toil, no labor, no sweat. When the priest, you know why? You, 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 you see the, the priest, they must, you must understand when the priests wear what they, the ephod and they, they wear different things underneath, the, re, the reason why they wear those things is because they don't want any sweat to fall upon the altar. Right. Yeah. God doesn't like sweat on the altar. Because he says if they sweat on the altar, then it's done out of human works. And therefore he says, I don't want it to be chiseled with any type of work. Any kind of, I'm going to do this. So then you've got to depend on the supernatural guys. You'll have to depend, your work will have to depend on something bigger than your own might. And that's what this church is about. Yeah. But to do that, you've got to plug in. You have to be a part of it. You can't be on the side of it. And therefore, leaders have always financed this church. And that's what I told America. And I, I, and I came back with fabulous leaders telling me the same thing. They're like, you know what? We want to help you. We want to build with you. We want to own with you. Nothing happens till you own. Nothing happens till you say, I am, if you count those stones, I am one of them. But it's not by someone cursing you or condemning you. It's not by me telling you anything, but you saying with your own conscience, I am going to be a part of this. And it's not by force. It has to be out of a conscience. Do you understand that? Not out of any type of force. And therefore, our leaders are like that. Our leaders are like that. Our leaders here locally have been like that. They've, they've come and they've given out our own hearts. I'll tell you, for, for, just for you all to know, if you're the congregation and even watching me online, just for you all to understand that this church, everything is paid for, okay? And it was paid for just by us sitting in a room with a couple of leaders at Ryan's house and just saying, hey, these are the costs that we have every month. How much will it take to raise this? And believe me, it didn't take us 10 minutes. 10 minutes with the leaders. Huh? Five minutes. Five minutes, no? Five minutes? Five minutes? Five minutes? Five minutes. It took us five minutes to just raise every bill that you can imagine in this church. So that no pressure comes on you. But in saying that, don't be someone on the side. Be a part of the living stones. Be a part of it. Say, I am one that came by my own unction. No one pushed me in here. No bathroom neck cut me in here and put me in there. No one forced me in here. I said, what can I do? That's what Carlin did. But I prefer if Carlin, this testimony came with like, this is what I will do. Like, not just the, the tide, but saying, this area is my area. I will cover it. And that's what I did in the U.S. I consecrated, just like I consecrated my leaders here. My leaders know what this is. We pray for their businesses. We consecrated their company. Their companies exist for the church. That doesn't mean they give everything to the church, but they exist for the church. They're consecrated living stones. And therefore now their businesses can prosper because each one now plays their part. Can I play? Can I, can I have that there? Can I have? Come to him as what? Huh, you remember the previous stones? You remember the previous stones? That Solomon was trying to build a temple? He's talking about that. He said, you see, when I asked Solomon to do the temple, I didn't want the stones with any type of toil and labor, any type of human unction on those stones. Now you have to come in the New Testament. You need to be a part of the building. You come now as living stones. Rejected indeed by men. Now I told you that you've been persecuted before. Hmm? So that means you're perfect. Okay? That means you're good. You're there. You've gone, you've gone through that. If you didn't go through that, then, they, then you're not, not still there. But chosen by God and precious. You also as living stones are built up as a spiritual house. A holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. It's there. Therefore it is also 
contained in scriptures. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes in him will by no means be put to shame. Is it there? Yes? Okay, so please know that God is calling you just like those stones. Hmm? What are the stones? The stones that didn't have to be forced, didn't have to be told. Stones of the temple that come and say, you know what, my life, I want it to be this part of this ministry. My life, I want to plug it in. I don't want to be out on a corner. There is a stone on a, a stone alone, a stone alone is called a rock. <laughs> a stone alone is called a rock. A stone put together is called an altar. A stone planned is called a church. What do you want to be? Hmm? What do you want to be? Because you come together. He, he commands you in the New Testament. Now, just like I told Solomon, know exactly where you're going to fit, my friend. There's no place, there are architects in this place. There's no stone that doesn't know for a purpose. You pull one of those stones out and the whole building collapses. My friend, I want to need you. I'm a person, as you can see, with the things that I do, I don't need anybody. But I want to, I desire to need you. We are about our father's business. And I desire to need you. I desire for you to be able to say, hey, you know what, Kirby, I want to be intricately connected to the system that you're creating. This is where I want to serve. This is where my money will go. This is where my life will be. I'm sanctified, consecrated. And in the USA, that's what we did. We, took, we had amazing leaders who came alongside and they partnered with us. And we are actually calling that group the altar. We're calling group, that group the altar, the consecrated altar to God. Because they came around and they said, Kirby, what do you plan for Sri Lanka? And Sri Lanka, believe me, you're blessed because you have leaders like that. And what do you, have, have, what do you want to do? Yes, yes, give them a big hand. You know, I was amazed at the... I was amazed, amazed at the generosity. And I said, I said, look, I want to, I, 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 you know, so many years ago, a long, long time ago, I was wanting to build a church, okay? And when I was wanting to build a church, immediately, I'll tell you, immediately, at the same time, when I wanted to build a church, um, I said, God, give me, I need some money to build a church. Um, next day, I woke up and uh, the Lord spoke to me and he said, Philip is going to come and he's going to give you 10 million rupees, okay? And uh, I remember like, oh, yes! We can start. God has heard my prayer. And Philip was really cool because he called me and he said, Kirby, I was going down candy or something like that or some driving and I heard a voice of the Lord say, go and give Kirby 10 million rupees. Amazing. Okay. And so then at that point of time, I was like, yes, I can. And then, then the Lord said, but you'll take it into your hands and you'll give it back to him. And I was like, but I thought I want to build my church. He said, yes, but this is how you're going to do it. Okay. Because it can't be out of human hands and human effort. Hmm? And so he said, but I've commanded Philip to give, give the money. So he has to now be obedient, but I said be obedient. Amazing God is, right? So he came and said, Kirby, I'm going to give you the 10 million rupees. Um, you know, and I feel that the Lord spoke to me. He spoke to me audibly like nearly and told me. So I said, okay, no problem, Philip. But I also heard it audibly like that. to will give it back to you. And he's like, that's crazy. Are you serious? I said, yeah, but I have to give it back to you. And I gave it back to him. And uh, he went off. And then, then the Lord said, that's just a small training for you. Very soon you're going to have the money to build your church. I was like, oh, great, great, great. Fantastic. Fantastic, God. Thank you so much. Okay, and we were prophesying over a couple of people and we got a very, very solid prophecy in. I'll tell you, it wasn't me actually who got the prophecy in, I must give, uh, I'll tell you, Fiona is probably one of the most prophetic people you ever meet in your life. Yeah, you give her a big hand. I, yeah, you can, yeah, you can. I, I mean, she gave a prophetic word to someone, like they came to meet me, but God opened our eyes and I mean, she saw things that like, that like, like, what the, like it was like a, a committed place, like <gasps> kind of place for them, right? And um, yeah. And um, he, she gave a very accurate property word. And what happened was we were left with, uh, let's put it like this, a couple of million dollars. Yeah. A couple of million dollars. Okay. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm understating that amount. Okay. Okay. And then you'll understand where I come from. A long time ago. Hmm? Long time ago. And then... She, then, then what happened was, <laughs> we honestly prayed and we asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what do we do? And he said, well, I was training you for this very thing. And then he's, I said like, yeah, so right, 
I got it, right? He said, yeah, you can have it. Or do you want to build the church? I said, but that's what I'm building. I'm building my building. He said, others will do the same. I could have done four times what others have done. Four times with that. Okay. He said, others will do the same, but are you ready to build my church? I said, but I thought I'm going to do that. And it's like, that's why the training with Philip. I thought the training with Philip is so I can keep this money. He said, but you can, if you want to. At that time, we were not 680, 70 churches. We were one church called a cult on a corner. Called by some of the big churches here, the big apostles abroad, that we were moved that is reducing. Hmm. Diminishing, they call us. And Fira and I both looked at that check and said, you know what? We'll do the same back. We'll give it back. Okay? And we gave it back to the people who gave it. Yeah. We gave it back. Because we wanted to build the church. And the church is living stones. People with clear conscience. People with clear conscience. And God kept me depending on people. I don't have to depend on people. But it's a humble place to depend on people. My leaders can sort everything out, every bulb, every camera, every, all, all the salaries. My leaders, just my local leaders. And my leaders can also pay for the building. Believe me, we've done the accounts. Huh? We've done the accounts. My leaders, we're just about to buy land, guys. Okay, finally, after so many years. Yeah. In a good place. And build a nice building. And I'll tell you, honestly, when I see it, I know what we've sacrificed to get this and to get that and to get the ADC. After I did that, Bishop Paul Timaran came and ordained me and I went from one church to 300 churches in one year. No, one church to 300 churches in one day. And in one year, in nine months, to 600 churches. Actually. And God said, I promise you, to give that money back, I'll, leave, I'll, I'll build a church. Hmm? My friends, Today, if you understand the global community that we have, the support that we have, the amazing support that we have, the loyalty, the type of people we have in the US. You'll be surprised. You'll be, you'll be surprised. People will be surprised. People who I truly believe will live for us and die for us. I truly believe that those people that we meet in the US will live and die for us. They're very solid. They're very strong. Linda Ordway and Rose Kaufman leading the group and the charge. Acho Dole in Dallas. Come on, give me a big hand. Mm. Yummy. Mm. Yeah. What? Yeah. Acho and Cheryl, for sure. How can you forget Cheryl? Acho and Cheryl, 100%. Yummy and Omar. Our leader is there. And they're leading a charge, my friends. And you'll see that this church will come up, but I don't want you to miss out. Because God is a miracle working God. Find yourself exactly where your company and your stone fits. And join my leaders who sit in the front seat to sow and keep you all going so strong. Join them and say, I want to be a part of it. Consecrate my company like I'm doing in the US. Consecrate my company so that I too can be a blessing into this reformation. And I can guarantee you the miracles that I have, all our leaders have. They're all, all tremendous favor, tremendous favor upon their lives. And it'll be yours as well. And we bless you. We're about our father's business. And we are going in for everything that God has planned. But first, we are busy with building people. And as we build people, we will build, finally, an edifice, a structure that we've been waiting for for years because we sacrifice to get there. And when we get there, unlike others, that will, it will be easy. There won't be any labor to this. Trust me. There will be labor. In one moment of time, we'll buy the land and we'll, buy the, we'll build the church. You watch. You watch. Mark my words. We're going to do it. Okay, bless you. Come on. Pastors, please come up. Please come up. If you want to get prayed over, trust me, these people are anointed. They'll pray over your life and they'll get you where you want to be. See you Tuesday.